Hello, Pisces. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to September of 2022. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope this video, this message, this reading finds you well. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the energies for the month of September of 2022 for you from the point of view of true sidereal astrology. Now, uh, if you are unfamiliar with true sidereal astrology or you've never really worked with it or you've never really heard a perspective about it or from it before, you've definitely come to the right place. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and smash and hit the uh, the, the bell notification to get messages or get uh, notified whenever I have a new message coming through. But when we talk about astrology here on Divine Conversations, we always talk about it or look at things from the idea or from the system of true sidereal astrology. So stick around if you're interested in learning more. It's a really fun ride and I really, really love it. So I'm glad, very, very happy to be able to bring this perspective to you. Yeah. So we're going to be looking at the month for you again from True Sidereal Astrology. And I'm going to be looking at this from the uh, chart of a Pisces rising. Now, when we're talking about the placement of the planets in the houses, that is going to be the most accurate for Pisces rising. But that does not mean that this doesn't or cannot resonate for you if you're, say, a Pisces sun or a Pisces moon. All right. So keep that in mind. And if you've never seen your true sidereal chart and you would like a copy of that, I would be more than happy to give you, provide you with a copy of your chart free of charge. Yeah. Just shoot me an email. My email can be found in the description box below. Shoot me an email, let me know you're interested, and I will be more than happy uh, to get you your chart. Just send me your birth info. So that would be the date of birth, your date of birth, the time of your birth, and the place of your birth. And I will be more than happy to get you your true sidereal natal chart. Yeah, I'm also available for uh, astrology sessions. If you would like to have a session with me discussing your chart, I am definitely available for that. And I'm also available for just a general energy tarot and oracle reading for whatever your desires are. All of the readings that I offer and the sessions that I offer are listed in the description box below. If you're interested in anything, just go ahead and shoot me an email and let me know and I will be more than happy to get you all hooked up. And as always, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Yeah? Alrighty, Pisces, we're going to get into these energies for you. Um, so for you, Pisces, there is a strong sixth house uh, uh, focus for you this month. Now, that is... Um, it, I do feel like it could be a little bit difficult for you for some, well, for some reason. Okay. No, I understand. I was going to say, um, f as I'm feeling through the energy for you right now, that sixth house focus does feel a little bit difficult for you to come to terms with or handle. Uh, the main reason for that would be the sixth house. The, the natural ruler of the sixth house is Virgo, which is technically in like the traditional or tropical system. Virgo is the exact opposite sign of yours. Um, and and you are very much the opposite of Virgo, uh, Pisces. So while you are very much, obviously you're a water sign, Virgo is an earth sign, um, but Virgo represents um, perfectionism and health and healing and wellness. And especially with the sixth house, this is um, your health and wellness, your routines, and maybe how you are of service to the greater collective or just to the people around you, the people that you love. And then on the opposite end of that, there's you, Pisces, who is very much also kind of like is um, very much about perfection, but you're about perfection in terms of the spiritual sense. Whereas Virgo is very much like we're going to make things perfect, we're going to fix things, we're going to heal things, we're going to adjust things, tweak things to make things perfect. Pisces, you're very much everything is perfect the way it already is. In spiritual truth, everything is perfect. Everyone is perfect as they are. They were made exactly as they were meant to be. But for you, Pisces, with this sixth house focus, uh, the sun is moving through the sixth house for you this month in Leo, moving into Virgo uh, about the 16th of the month. And then um, Mercury is retrograde in Virgo. Um, and that's actually going for you, Pisces, rising at least. That Mercury retrograde is going from your seventh house back into to your sixth house in the sign of Virgo, right? And Virgo is the natural ruler of the sixth house. So there's a strong sixth house Virgo energy focus for you. And yes, um, this might be very difficult for you to deal with. There may be some hard truths that you're going to have to come to um, come to alignment with, or you're going to have to be able to accept for yourself. But understand Pisces, that this is really, 
I really want to say don't take this personally, okay? Or at least do your best to try and not take this personally because ultimately whatever it is you you become aware of here, um, it's really all meant to help you heal, to help you grow into better a better sense of yourself. And with uh, Mercury moving retrograde from your seventh house, which is your house of interpersonal relationships, maybe even law and order, you know, to put it basically, um, this with it moving from your seventh house into your sixth house first of all this is mercury retrograde by the way first of all this is probably highlighting your uh your associations with people your friendships your social groups maybe um there is a, a social group element with the full moon i'll get into that but um this really could be highlighting ways that you express yourself with the collective or with the people around you, um, ways that maybe other people have been treating you. All of this is meant to help you heal, to help you grow, to help you expand. Please don't take it personally. The first card you have here is the Knight of Cups. And I really feel this Knight of Cups energy is the universe trying to, mind, to remind you that we're not trying to hurt you. Um, we're, we definitely don't want to see you cry. We definitely don't want to see you upset. And I don't mean, uh, go ahead and baby please cry if you need to cry please go ahead and cry but but the universe what the universe these energies are saying here is we're not trying to make you cry we're not trying to hurt you we're just trying to show you oh, wow for lack of a better term this is literally what spirit just said we're literally we're just trying to show you how you can clean up your act uh be more responsible for yourself and your actions um and also clean up some of your relationships here this is all coming from a place of love the knight of cups okay it's all coming from a place of love um you may have some people around you that are coming forward towards you trying to be like hey look this is the way we see it or this is how i see it and blah 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 whoop de whoop and all that and uh, again if you have someone in your life that's really kind of like coming trying to come to you and be like look boo this is how it is from an outside point of view from the outside looking in please understand that this person actually really does love you this person really does care about you they're trying to help you succeed they're trying to see you grow knight of cups energy i associate the knight of cups with the heart chakra okay this is a very heart based energy all right but there is a lot of focus for the whole collective. There's a lot of focus on social groups this month because we do have a full moon and that moon, the full moon is going to be, well, the moon is going to be in the constellation of Aquarius while the sun is still in the constellation of Leo. This is at, uh, this is in the late hours of September 9th, early into the early hours of September 10th. That's when the full moon is going to be exact. Um, and in the sign of Aquarius, there is a lot of energies for the collective in terms of, um, uh, working with other people, bringing your beliefs or your thoughts and your feelings and your new form of expression that may have been influenced on the new moon back in August 27th, which was in the constellation of Leo. Um, however, that new moon energy back on August 27th, think back to how maybe you were triggered or enlightened or just pushed to express yourself in new and better ways, pushed to um, have more fun or take care of yourself in a better sense. However, that energy was 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 influenced for you back on the in the new moon on August 27th. I feel like by the time we reach the full moon, this is a time period for you to really express that um, or, or at least express that with the collective um if you have some new ideas or new ways that you want to move forward that new moon or, i'm sorry the full moon <clears throat> which is again in the constellation of aquarius the full moon could be a really great time for you to really branch out, to reach out, to get yourself rolling here. You have the three of wands that's come out now. Moving forward, the, the full moon is a really great time for you to take those dreams and wishes that were activated for you during the, the new moon. The full moon is a really great time for you to really start investing in that. Get the ball rolling, branching out, um, and trying to like make the connections with the people or potentially find the people that can really help you move these dreams forward but for you Pisces what I'm feeling here with that new moon is you really starting to understand how it is you can better express yourself how it is you can be more accountable I really feel like um, uh, when it comes to the people around you again the, uh, the, the the moon is in Aquarius Aquarius is the ruler of the 11th house the 11th house or at least the natural ruler right the 11th house is your house of wishes 
and hopes and fears also, but also it's your it's the house of social groups and communities and organizations and stuff like that. So um, while yes, it would be a really great time for you to branch out and try and meet new people for you Pisces, especially with this seventh house focus with Mercury moving retrograde from your seventh house back into your sixth house. Again, social environments, your social uh, uh, interactions, how it is you express yourself in social groups. Those are the big things that I'm picking up for you. Um, and also maybe how... Wow, okay, what I just heard was how you may have been allowing yourself to be treated in terms of people around you. Okay, uh, again... Knight of Cups energy is reminding you that however it is you're being triggered during this time throughout the month, it's all meant <clears throat> to help you heal. It's all meant to help you bring, uh, really, really Pisces, it could be an energy of clearing out your social groups to help bring more of this Knight of Cups heart-based loving energy into your circle, into your life. And with the Three of Wands here, this is talking about um, the, what you, how, uh, the, the return on your investment, okay? How, what are you? You, what are you investing in? Who have you been investing in? Who are these people, these social groups, these organizations, whatnot, whatever? How have you been investing in that? And what is the return there? This really could be a triggering moment for you, Pisces, but ultimately it's all love-based. It really is love-based. And it really, it, depending, it, it really only depends on how you want to see it, how you want to perceive of it. So if you really want to look at it, look at look at it this way, Pisces. However, it is you're being triggered at this time to clean up your act. What Spirit is saying that's very a Virgo. That's a very Virgo energy. Let's clean up your act here, right? Okay, fine. And that's really how this could be a really difficult thing for you. But um, especially since Virgo is an Earth sign, Earth is very practical. But um, shoot, I'm sorry. Where was I going with that, Pisces? <laughs> no, but really, like. All of this is, oh, I'm sorry, there, there it is. So you really could be cleaning up your act to help bring in better love for you, so to help make space, to help make that space, Pisces, for what it is you really want to be receiving in your life, the real truly desired return on the investment here, what it is you truly dream of in terms of what you want to receive from the people around you. Think of it this way. However it is you're being triggered in this way, it's helping you clean up your act. Yes, Virgo, we hear you, but it's helping you make space. It's helping you make space, Pisces, for the things that you, the interactions you truly want to be having in life, okay? All right, we talked through it. Now let me show you the chart here for those of you that would like to see the chart. So here's the chart for a Pisces rising for the month of September 2022. But also keep in mind, guys, Pisces, sun and moon or any other Pisces placement that you have could resonate with this. As you see here, you do have the sun moving through your sixth house in the constellation of Leo. By the 16th, 15th, 16th of September, it is going to be in Virgo, okay? So that's really, and that's activating this Virgo energy. This is as of the 9th of September, the day that we're looking at the chart right now. So this is actually when uh, Mercury is going, it's starting his retrograde. And ironically enough, Mercury is starting his retrograde right around the time of the full moon. And I love to say Mercury retrograde is a really great time for you to rewrite the programming uh, of like, uh, like uh, yeah, rewrite the programming, learn something new. Mer Mercury retrograde is a really great time to kind of step back and start to retrain yourself. If there's anything new you would like to learn or something a, a new process you would like to start mercury retrograde is a really great time to really start to learn that new skill set or start to plan that new that new endeavor do the research that you would need to do to start that new process whatnot whatever and with mercury being in his uh, main exalted sign of Virgo here. This is this is I, a Pisces. I know this is probably going to feel very uncomfortable for you, but ultimately, if you can really, if you can really tap into this energy for yourself, Pisces, you could really start to make some really beautiful transformations for yourself. And I really feel like this Leo energy, which really was kicked off that influence of the Leo energy, kicked off again back on Oct August twenty seventh when the new moon was in Leo. It's really really kicking off, giving me this feeling for you of just wanting to do better for yourself, wanting to treat yourself better, wanting to have people around you that treat you better, okay? 
loving yourself even more and doing what is necessary, healing the process or doing what's necessary to really be receiving what it is that you want, a better return on your investment, okay? So Mercury is going to be moving retrograde from your seventh house, which is officially ruled by Libra, okay? Um, and you actually have Libra in your eighth house with this. That's very interesting, uncovering deep secrets. But I really feel like this is a lot about your social situations. You really, uh, for some of you professionally, this could really be a great time for you to, again, meet the new people that could really accelerate your career, okay? Um, so that's beautiful, but this is all about learning about what you have around you during this time with Mercury moving retrograde from the seventh house into your sixth house and doing what it takes to care for yourself better, to have better routines, maybe to learn how to communicate better too, if that's your, if that's been a topic of contention for you. Okay. Now, moving now the full moon the moon is going to be in aquarius and that's in your 12th house naturally ruled by you pisces all right so i really do feel like this full did i say the new moon i meant the full moon i'm so sorry but the full moon the moon is actually going to be in your 12th house at the, during the the peak of this uh of this full moon energy and i really i really feel like pisces this is influencing you to really accept yourself as you are to love yourself as you are but the really difficult aspect of this is accepting how the virgo energy with the mercury moving retrograde in virgo how that is influencing you to create better circumstances for yourself. It's really not about changing who you are to have these better relationships. It's just about merely loving yourself more, accepting more of who you truly are, accepting what it is you really truly want, and just changing the way you go about it, changing um, maybe the way you communicate so that you can communicate effectively, more effectively. But again, Pisces, if you're having to change the way that you're communicating here, it's also that you can... Um, uh, express yourself better, be more honest or truthful or upright about what it is you're feeling or forthright about what it is you're feeling so that you can have a better way to get what it is you want or need out of your relationships. Pisces, this is really not about changing who you are. This is about accepting who you are and changing the way that you go about receiving what it is that you want in your life from your relationships, okay? Now, this does mean you might have to change some of the people around you, but ultimately, it's for your highest good here. Yes, that's correct. Ace of Swords just came out here. Yet some of you are really needing to clean up your act in terms of allowing yourself to have better relationships, which means cutting certain relationships out of your life right now. Cutting people off that disrespect you, cutting people off that don't listen to you. If you are one of the Pisceans out here that are like having to um, do better in terms of how you communicate about what it is you're truly feeling and what it is you're really wanting, and you're finding that as you're starting to do that, some of the people that you thought were closest to you are like reading you the riot act or not listening to you, brushing you off, like gaslighting you, or all that kind of stuff. That is your sign right then and there, Pisces, that you really don't need to, be, need to be associating with those individuals any longer. It's all about doing better for you, okay? Because we love you and we want you to be loved. And there's also, here's the other thing. Now, what's going to be helping you, what's helping all of the collective to make these big changes right now is Mars's transit through the sign of Taurus, okay? Now, Taurus is a very practical, another earth sign, okay? Um, and Mars in Taurus really gives us that tenacity that we need to, to, to follow through, to be consistent, to do that consistent work, to get up every day, rise and grind, you know what I mean? That's a very Taurus, very Mars in Taurus energy. Now for you, Pisces, especially Pisces rising, Mars is transiting through Taurus in your third house. What's the third house? First of all, the third house is ruled by Gemini, one of Mercury other uh, ruling signs, okay? But the, the third house is all about communication, 
It's also about travel, not long distance travel, short distance travel, but it's also about learning, learning and communication. Communication actually might be a really big thing for you. Really, you may, you may really be able to learn how to communicate much more effectively, but this is all so that you can express yourself better and get more of what it is that you want out of your relationships, Pisces, okay? So Mars moving through Taurus is really going to pr help provide you with that sense of tenacity that follow through to really get the job done roll up your sleeves and do that dirty work to relearn and reshape and refocus rewrite that programming okay but then also mars is moving through your third house of communication here the hermit just came out. Um, Mars is moving through, oh my God, more Virgo energy, but Mars is moving through that third house for you, Pisces rising. So that's really could help you focus on communicating better. Be Maybe even being more forthright, more upfront about what it is you feel. Okay, because Mars and Taurus can be a kind of a selfish thing. Um, very much so. It can be. It doesn't have to be that bad, but it could be. Okay, so really, but also... <laughs> the hermit Virgo energy uh, again Pisces this is all about going within and understanding yourself better going within and finding out how it is what is the truth about the situation how can you communicate better how can you do better for yourself how, uh, there you go there's that Sun and Leo energy how can you love and have pride and respect for yourself more to generate these energies of having better relationships in your life it's all about loving you, Pisces. And however, however it is you're triggered here, just understand that those triggers are helping you change the wheel of fortune ruled by Jupiter. That's one of your ruling planets. Jupiter is in your, fourth, in your first house, Pisces, in your sign. How can you be better for you? How can you love yourself more? How can you respect yourself more? So it is you, so that you do get better, more of what you want and better things that you want. How can you, how can you express yourself better and more fully? I just heard, what can you learn about yourself in this time to reshape the situation and rewrite the programming so that you can receive that, those blessings of Jupiter, but you've got to step up. You have got to be honest with yourself. Nobody's going to change this for you. You've got to do it for you. You have got to love you enough to say, you know what? I'm going to change the dynamic for me right here and right now. And that has very much to do with your interpersonal relationships. The strongest thing I'm hearing for you, Pisces, is how can you communicate better? And this is really not about appeasing anyone else. Again, for those of you that are really learning how to communicate better and it triggers or it puts somebody else off, that is your first sign right there that that's not a relationship that you need to, to be fucking with. Straight up and down, okay? Straight up and down, Pisces. Anything else? Last but not least, we do have the, a new moon and again, more Virgo energy. The new moon is gonna be in Virgo. And for you, Pisces, I believe that's going to be straddling your sixth and seventh house. Yeah. But yep, yep, yep. So the sun is actually going to be the sun and the moon. Well, well, yeah, because the new moon is a conjunction between the sun and the moon. That's when they're like their their energies are coming together, whereas the full moon is when they're opposing each other. So the sun and the moon for you are going to be in your seventh house. Uh, but then there's also a stellium of energy here between the sun and the moon and then Mercury and Venus. Mercury and Venus are still going to be in your sixth house, whereas the sun and the moon are going to be in your seventh house. So again, however it is you've been learning, however it is you've been learning how to express yourself and, and, and sh clean up your act in terms of your relationships here can really get kick-started, can really get off the ground. Um, you could really set the record straight, set the stage, really clean the slate, okay? By the time we, meet, we reach this new moon, which is going to be on September 25th. Also for the collective with this stellium of energy, including Venus, I feel like Venus is definitely giving us like a shot of fertilizer, okay, to really help us uh, grow this new and beautiful thing, all right? All right, Pisces, that's what I have for you. Any closing messages, Spirit? Let me shift this real quick. All right, closing messages for Pisces for their September 2022. The Empress. Oh, Venus, unconditional love. Pisces, you are perfect just as you are. 
and yes we can be better we can do better okay we are we are meant to learn and to grow here but i really i really want you to tap into allow yourself to tap into the moon being in aquarius which is uh for this full moon at least which is all about aquarius is all about revolutionizing things and making things equal and beneficial for everybody okay and with that being in your 12th house pisces that's really influencing you to love yourself as you are but revolutionize your life so that you can express yourself more. You can have more of those beautiful relationships that you really want and love. Also, uh, at the Empress here, which does represent Venus energy, Venus also rules not only Taurus, but Libra, okay? Who is that traditional ruler or that main ruler of your seventh house, right? Of the seventh house, not necessarily, not necessarily just yours, uh, but is the overall, is the main ruler of the seventh house, that Libra energy. But Libra is all about balance, harmony between the people between everybody right how can and, and the empress here is unconditionally loving okay she can be enabling just because she just wants everyone to be happy and have what it is that they want all right provide that to yourself do that for yourself pisces love yourself enough have enough pride in yourself go ahead and tap into the last bits of leo uh, the sun and leo energy to really have enough pride for yourself to say you know what i am going to do better i am going to clean up my act in my relationships i'm not going to allow that toxic person to come in and run my life or or, or trigger me emotionally or push me around or gaslight me into no i'm not going to have that anymore why because the Empress, go ahead, you know what? The Empress and Venus, and go ahead and say your best friend Eric says, you are allowed, you deserve to have all of that beauty. So go on and get it for yourself, Pisces. Ain't nobody else gonna do it for you though, okay? All right? I'm gonna leave it there. I love you guys so very much. I hope this was helpful for you. Please make sure to smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how this resonated for you. Um, and if you would like, oh, and definitely uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell for all of the readings that on all the sessions and messages we've got coming through because there's a lot coming through. We have so much to talk about in the coming months. So please stay tuned. And if you would like a copy of your true sidereal chart free of charge, definitely shoot me an email letting me know how this resonates or let me know you're interested. Uh, send me your birth date, the time of birth, and your place of birth, and I will be more than happy to shoot you back your true sidereal natal chart. And also, I'm available for sessions. If you would like to have a session with me, if you'd like to book a session, I'm definitely available for that. Or if you just want a general energy tarot reading and tarot and oracle card reading, I'm also available for that. All of the information is in the description box below. But with that said, Pisces, I love you so much. I hope you have a fantastic week. A week? week. Yeah, sure. Have a fantastic week, but I also hope you have a fantastic month and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next session very, very soon. Yes. Excellent. Bye.